Changes everything up when we have visitors. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this day, for the opportunity to meet here in your house and to worship you. And Lord, I thank you for what we're about to receive for your honor and glory. Lord, I ask you to help us to remember to give as you've blessed us and to give cheerfully or not give at all. And Father, we know that you've blessed us with a great many things already. We just ask you, Lord, to help us to remember to give to your, to your ministry. And Lord, I pray that you bless that giving and expound it upon this community that we might further your gospel and teach others about your Son. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
God is good. All the time. All the time. Sheltered in the arms oh, of heaven. Amen. Now, if y'all know it, sing along with amen. us. Just don't sing louder than me. <laughs> That's the main thing. Right there. Oh, 
come on up here. We'll sing Loving God, Loving Each Other. It's in here. There it is. <laughs> See, y'all thought I had it memorized. See, y'all can read that from out there. <laughs> It's my job to do that. <laughs> Let me let that go. Push the button. My big fingers will just tell where it. Maybe that's it. There. <laughs> Thank you. 
she does that, I want her to share about when we go and work in different reservations and things, uh, she does a Bible study for the women and encouraging them and, uh, and I just want her to share just a little bit about that. In some of the places that we go with the Indians, whether they're in New Mexico or whether they're in Panama, uh, very often the women serve. Uh, they cook all day, they clean all day, they sew all day, they do all day long for other people. Um, when I've gone to these little churches, I, one of the things I want them to understand and know is how loved they are, how important they are. Jesus died for them. I want them to know, I have found, if I go to Burger King and tell them what I want to do, they'll give me all the crowns that I want. <laughs> so I take crowns with me. And part of what I do is I want them to understand they are children of God. Amen. They are. They're His daughters. Gentlemen, you are His sons. And ladies, you are His daughters. You are royalty, and you didn't really realize it. You are children of the King of Kings, yeah. the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods. You are His child. You are a joint heir with Jesus. He died for you. He paid the price for you. You are so important. You are so loved that a God would give His only Son to pay for your sins, right. to bring you to Him. I want them to know how important they are. One of the things that we do in this Bible study, we'll cook a meal. Uh, we did this in New Mexico. In Panama, we made chocolate cake. They've never, they don't do that, and it was amazing to them to see this happen <laughs> and to get to eat this exquisite piece of sweetness. They were very excited about that. But in uh, New Mexico, with the um, Hickorya and the Mescalero, Mescalero Apaches. Uh, those ladies, uh, we cooked a meal for them and served them. We were their waiters. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a little while, some of the ladies began to cry. They began to tear up. And I thought, what did we do? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. We somehow offended them. So I finally said, did we do something to hurt you? Are you offended? And they were like, no. This is the first time in our lives Somebody is doing for us. We always do this for other people. Mm -hmm. This is really special. Something that simple touched mm -hmm. them that, that we would serve them. Mm -hmm. Jesus did that too. Amen. That's he did right. that too. Yeah. He did mm -hmm. that too. Yes, he did. He's called us to be his servants. Amen. Amen. The song I would like to sing this morning, uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow, We Forget Too. He knows every little sparrow that falls, every little bug, every little creature. <laughs> he knows them all. He loves us even more than those. He yeah. knows how many hairs are on our heads, whether we have two or three or several hundred thousand. <laughs> he knows. And he cares. And he takes care of us. So often we get busy and it's, you know, I can take care of this, God. I got this. And you know what? Yeah, I got it. I, I've got a mess that I made. But if I trust Him, He may not give me everything I want, but I promise you, He is going to give me everything I need, and He's going to take care of me every moment. I just need to trust Him. I'm ready, sir, and it would be number three. You know that. Okay. Thank you. Do the 
only you mind to tell me there's something been bothering me why is it that old devil he just won't let God's children be See, he's purposed and he's determined to get right in my way and turn us from the way of life he wants to lead our soul astray yeah i'm not giving up i'm not turning around by the grace of god i win a shining crown someday hell i'll keep holding on to that nail scored hand i'm not giving Keeping on, keeping on. And, uh, but I want to sing another song if I can find it in here. I have all these words memorized if I can see them. <laughs> There's my message. That, that's, I can sing my message. <laughs> Look out. Look in there and find shelter in the arms of God. No, not shelter. That other one. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> See, she put it right there on the. You know how these women's are? <laughs> Praise God. Oh, right. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. That, yeah, thank you very much, brother. <laughs> oh. We're still married, by the way. <laughs>
hands to you. Sometimes all I do is cry. Everything that I have, I owe to you. Lord, and how the reason somebody that did. Amen. And that's who I look to. Throughout Amen. our lives, you can ask these, these folks my age in here. They'll tell you, we've not seen the plan from the beginning, but God has always come through. He's never late, and He's always on time, and you'll hear that over and over to try to encourage you. But friends, like every one of us can get up and testify how God has come through so many times. Have any of y'all seen the chalk, chalk talk artist or whatever it is? What he does, he puts up a screen here and it's black and he has some lights up there and he takes chalk and he starts drawing on them but you can't tell what he's drawing because you don't see the end. It kind of says something to us, doesn't it? But you keep watching because you know 
He has a message and a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Friends, there's no age limit on how long that pain is. We want to think it's geared just to young people. No, it's geared to all of us peoples. God has a plan for my life and it begins when? Right now. It begins today. Right. And so they keep drawing and then all of a sudden he'll change and have a different color in there and you're going, I think I know what it is. And, and then he keeps on drawing. And it keeps changing and growing. And then what does he do at the end? Do you know? Uh oh. Did you hear what she said? I haven't seen it. He turns on a light. And that light brings out all those colors and it has a story behind it. Friends, when God, you trust your life, you may not see it right now. I mean, why does it happen to me? I don't know why it happens to me. I can't answer that. One of these days that light's going to flip on. That's right. No. And friends, we're going to be able to see God. And even if we don't see Him, remember there were some who said, okay, we're not going to bow down to you. And even though you may throw us in the furnace, we're trusting our God. Whether He delivers us here in our physical body on this earth, or if He just goes, Hell, y'all come on home. It's, we're trusting God that much. Friends, that's what the Old Testament's talking about. Daniel, <laughs> you know, they threw him in that lion's den. You know what? You know, if, you, if you're really cold, put a dog under your foot. You know, slip your foot up under a dog and he'll warm you up. <laughs> Don't you know that Daniel had a good night's nice rest? He got laid up against them, those lions and uh, felt so good. He was in a dungeon, probably cold in there. Probably some smelling that you wouldn't want to smell. And yet he had a peace in his life. And, the, and here's the testimony. Here's what the king first said. Daniel, was your God able to save you? <laughs> now then, what if that's what they're saying about you in your circumstances? Don't go so far under that you, you don't look up and know that God has a plan and when that light flips on, you may not know it. But when it flips on, you're going to see His plan. You may not see it over here. You may see it in heaven. I was just talking to a member of her. her we go to First Baptist Church in Gonzales. We mean, my membership's at Rosanke. I call it Roswanke. But anyway, <laughs> uh, and so we're in between both, is what we are. But a, a, a guy that's a deacon in the church who's lived for the Lord and served the Lord all his years and raised his family up to know the Lord. And uh, he said in 1958, he said, you know a guy, an evangelist named Larry Taylor? I said, yeah, he's a friend. He's my he, one of my heroes. He's still keeping on telling people about Jesus. I just talked to him. He said, well, in 58, I went to Smiley, the First Baptist Church. I was tired, been working hard, but I wanted to go hear this, the gospel. And he, gave, he raised his hand during the invitation, Pastor. And, and Larry went out to him and talked to him and began to just go through the plan of salvation. He wasn't trying to talk him into anything. The man had a desire to have a relationship with God. And he was saved. In 1958. Now friends, if that would have happened to you, you would never know what happened to that guy. In all these years, see, God did change his life. And God did grow him. And, and he served God. Don't give up. Satan, we're not out here trying to put notches in our gun. God wants us to be out there and be a living testimony. And to share, just like you did this morning about that guy that said he was saved. And when you stopped and talked to him on the side of the road, hey man, somebody...
have sold the seed. I'm praying for a couple right now. They're my age. I mean, I say anything. And uh, I lived a life that had the parents that took me to church. The only drugs I was on was being drugged to church. Yeah. And uh, that's not a bad thing. This man on the opposite side, he got into the drugs. He went here, inherited land, became uh, with oil on it. He never worked in his life. And now he's 74. And money's not the thing. Money's not going to make him happy. Only Jesus. So I've been praying for him. I've been praying like the walls of Jericho that God would take those barriers that Satan has wrapped around him throughout life, throughout his drugs, throughout the criticism, and on and on and on. And guess what? Those walls can come to tumble down. He can get saved. Uh, now, I don't know him personally. Just have met him one time. And, uh, but uh, he has a wife, no kids. And uh, he does what he wants to do. Because nobody says no to him. Yet he's in trouble with the law. He has a bracelet on his ankle. You don't get one of them unless you're bad or you've done something bad. So they, they monitor him wherever he goes. And uh, this man needs Jesus. I, the other day, this is what blessed my heart. I called him. He was going to give us some deer for our, uh, you know, I have a camp for boys that don't have dads in their homes. And we take all the food we can get. And sometimes... A lot of times it's deer meat mainly, and uh, we've got some cooks, and they, they they know how to cook. They're retired firemen from down in Houston. Well, them boys, uh, they know what they're doing, and and so anyway, I called him to see when I could come get some deer, and uh, at the end of the conversation, he said, "God bless," you know. I've been saying, Lord, I don't know who can witness to this man, but Lord, surely there has been some in the past and seeds sown in the past yeah. that he would get saved. I don't know who it's going to be God's going to use. It doesn't have to be me, but I sure want to be a part of it and be a part of that one that's praying. And the reason why I'm telling you that story is I want to challenge you to reach out there's lost folks. Without your prayers, without your seeds being sown, friends, they're not going to know Jesus. Like he talked about this morning, about uh, one day everybody is going to kneel and glorify who Jesus is, who God is. And those that know Him as Savior are going to be in heaven. And those that don't, are going to be lost eternity without God. It's serious the way we walk and talk. The stands that we make. There's another script, uh, scripture in Ephesians 2.10. It says, For we are His what? Workmanship. Now what, what does that word mean? We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. Good works. Mm. Which, now here's what blows us away. You say, well, oh, I'm a singer. <laughs> Which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Where God has called you, walk in Him. If it's to be a singer, so what? If it's to be a rancher and donate a calf every once in a while to a singer, you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, in true reality, there's a lot of men out there that, that they think they've got it together and they need to know Jesus Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. A lot of women out there who've struggled along and having hard times, they need to have somebody saddle up next to them and love them. 
And this is a church that does it. And I praise the Lord for y'all's mission efforts to go out to, to all the world. That's what we studied this morning. It starts right here, across the street. And they, they live across the street. <laughs> and, uh, and then throughout this world. Uh, let me say just a little bit. We did have five weeks of camps this summer, which was a... We didn't know we was going to have any, as you know, with, with the COVID and everything. We had probably... We averaged right at 30... Uh, three times five is, help me somebody, preacher didn't even know, 15. <laughs> I don't do math. I'm a Bible student. You yeah, we had over a hundred folks, a hundred young people come. And uh, many decisions for the Lord. And if you could just see the, uh, when, uh, when you see these boys, you realize, man, there is hope. For the future, they'd put their arms, you know, around each other and go back and forth singing these praise songs about the Lord and uh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless His holy name. And you're going, man, that's what these kids, these are the kids of the future. It's who they are, and so it was just such a blessing. And uh, you know, for the boys' camp, the girls' camps are girls. You know, <laughs> they don't even let me come in. Preacher, don't cover your face up when I say things like that. But that, for real, girls need to be with girl with women. The girls need to be with girls, and guys need to be with guys. And so we shoot twenty twos and skeet and bows and arrows. And you know what we did a couple of years, last year or year before that. My, I've had my grandma's piano when I was a kid uh, that has been in the barn when well, you know what kind of shape it's, it's in. And I said, Grandma, I know you can't hear me, but I'm going to take your piano put it out there for the boys to shoot. Oh. <laughs> They have so much fun shooting that piano. I mean, you can't hardly miss a piano. <laughs> sure, man. I'm looking for anybody have another piano they want to volunteer. That I could not believe the excitement. They were giving me, I'm shooting next. <laughs> Shoot the piano. I don't know what they were, you know, anyway. And the Lord said, let them shoot that piano. I said, okay, I had no idea. It would become something special. And, uh, but anyway, we try to do things. We have woodwork. And we do metal shop. Uh, we take uh, horseshoes and railroad stacks, stacks, spikes. Down there at first, there in uh, Rosanka, the youth director, he said, okay, he took a Sunday school class. They went just started walking down the railroad tracks, picking up the stake, uh, spikes to give to us to be able to make things with them. You can make a cross with a, a couple of spikes like this with, uh, sitting on the base of a horseshoe. It's cool looking. Mm -hmm. And uh, didn't cost anything. <laughs> and, uh, but friends, they know we care. We've had some boys with tough situations and, and it would take a couple of years of them coming and they saw that we were real, that we cared about them. Mm -hmm. But more than us, they saw they had a need for Jesus in their lives. Yes. And they accepted the Lord. This coming summer, well, because of the COVID, we had raised money to put a a, a, a roof on a Mescalero Apache uh, uh, a roof on their church. Well, winter time came and COVID came, and so they weren't able to get in there until uh, the early part of June, just for like long enough to put a new roof on it. Yeah. And uh, praise the Lord for that. And I'll send some pictures here to you, to y'all uh, from the church, I mean, from what we did. And so anyway, just to say that, that uh, sometimes, why has all this happened? This is not the first time something like, this is not sneaking up on God. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, God says, I know right where you're at. Some of you probably have had the COVID and, uh, I don't know, but I know this much. We're here today. 
And we're going to keep on keeping on for Jesus. Amen. And as far as the politics are concerned, <laughs> if we want God to bring revival, then we must allow God to do that. Our government, our works, our America should have been judged a long time ago. That's right. Amen. And uh, over 30, I mean 60 million babies aborted. Mm -hmm. You know what 60 million is? See, when you throw that out there, you go, huh? Mm -hmm. Take all of Texas and whip your hand across Texas. That's 30 million what Texas is. You go from Georgia and Alabama, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Texas, and then New Mexico, and you'll have 32 million, I mean 60 million people wiped out. Mm -hmm. Friends, when we begin to make it personal, we begin to see a great need. Friends, we need to, God, died for you and I. He died for those babies. Mm -hmm. And we have a responsibility now as Christians. Don't know what's going to happen. But I'm still praying for God's Amen. mercy yes. and grace yes. upon America. Amen. And then I'm going to trust Him. It may not go the way I want it to go. Right. I want it to go and you know how I want it to go. <laughs> but what if it doesn't? We're going to, it's not going to change me. It scare me maybe. And it might make me inside just grit my teeth and, and my body. But friends, I believe our God has a plan. I do too. And in the midst of what happens, God's going to be glorified. Uh, in this epidemic that we've had, I still have not, it's hard to judge it, but has people repented and come to, to God? I don't know. God knows. There's been a lot of people who've died and a lot of families that it's touched their lives. We don't know what God was doing uh, in those families, in those lives. Trust God. He's real and He's alive. Amen. Now then, young people, I told you God has a plan for your life and there's no age limit on it. Okay, old people. <laughs> there's no age on it. Well, I'm too... You know, I, I did a lot of revivals in East Texas. I'm a Houston boy. And half of East Texas is retired up there. But they also retired from the church. Uh, yeah. Man, well, uh, I've already done my. I was a WMU. I, I was. <laughs> I was uh, uh, counting the money every Sunday, and uh, you know, just on and on and on. Friends, a fresh and a new God has a plan for your life. Amen. And I don't know what it is, but you're to be. What your responsibility is, God? Here I am. Yeah. Use me. I've heard so many different stories. One, one lady, retired missionary, she was old. But she got convicted. She started calling people in the phone book. Amen. Well, you know what you do on that? You, you, uh, I, I told Mr. Robo, I hey, Mr. Robo, don't be calling me no more. My name is Sambo. And they still keep calling back. But see, she would call and say, I just want to meet you. I'm so-and-so, and want to know if you have any prayer requests. And she ministered to a lot of people, and a few of them got set, prayed for salvation. Mm -hmm. Others were challenged. Others felt like somebody else cares about me, about my problems. I'm not saying that's for you. I'm just saying, God, here I am. What do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's what I pray. You know, I'm 74, but I'm looking for more. I don't know what God's going to do. I've got some ideas, and I'm excited about them, but I want them to be God's plan. And you see, that's where it is, young people. It's God's plan for your life. He'll lead you in the way, in the truth, in the life. And 
All of us in here have made decisions. And guess what, young people? We've had to live with those decisions. Some of them have been really great decisions. First, greatest decision I made was I accepted Christ for my Savior. You know what, my, as a Christian young boy, 12, 13 years old, you know what I'd pray for? This it sounds crazy. I'd pray for my wife. I, my mom and daddy, my mother left me when I was like a year old. My daddy remarried when I was five, and my grandma pretty much raised me. And, uh, and I said, God, I want to marry the woman you have for me. And through those teenage years, I kept praying that. Sure, I fell in love, but I kept praying that and saw that it wasn't God. I kept praying that. Then when my wife passed away after 50 and a half years of marriage, I said, Lord, I'm not looking for a wife. <laughs> and, uh, and I sure wasn't. And God says, you, you need a wife more than you think you do. <laughs> and uh, we were married almost two years ago, next month, right? The night, I was close. <laughs> <laughs> And six weeks after we were married, she made me go to the hospital. Friends, the doctor said if I didn't come in that day, I would have died. And uh, now that I wasn't trying to be macho, I just thought I was out of shape. I couldn't hardly breathe. I said, man, I just started exercising because I didn't feel bad. Well, it was more than exercising. My body was shutting down. And uh, so anyway, all that story uh, is behind us. We're going to keep on keeping on. But friends, God has a plan. I'm so glad I prayed as a 12-year-old boy that I'd marry the woman God had for me. Then those girls that I dated, and, and, uh, and one girl I fell in love with, and everybody said, oh, they're going to get married because both Christians and all. And Sammy got his life right with God and all. But you know, I kept praying. God let us break up. Then I married that other woman I was married 50 and a half years to. So glad I prayed. And then Gwen and I, we had met each other, but anyway, uh, the Lord began to let us talk. And uh, I'm so glad I kept praying, God, Your will for my life or I'd be up in heaven going sick them <laughs> today instead of down here sharing the gospel. Friend, he has a he has a one scripture that just kind of goes along with what we're saying is in Jeremiah 33, verse 2 and 3 says, Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his holy name. Call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not even know of. You see, God has a plan for your, your young life and for us old people. He's got a plan for our lives. Joshua 13.1, I like this just because it says, When Joshua was old, I mean had grown old, the Lord said to him, You are very old. He already just said I was, he was old. He said, You're very old. <laughs> But then here's what he said, there's still a large area of land to be taken over, to be conquered, to be possessed. Friend, there's a territory out there that God wants to use you Amen. in. Look to Him, whatever it might be. Uh, seek Him. Uh, Psalms 92, the righteous man will flourish like a palm tree, when he grows uh, when, like the palm tree, he will grow like a cedar in Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. Friend, are you planted in the house of the Lord? Yea, amen, you are, amen. if you know him. And then it says, they will still yield fruit in old age and should be full of sap and very green. Friends, there's 
another reason God has you still alive because he has a plan to serve you for you to serve him and Genesis 18 14 says is there anything too hard for God you mean God can use me yes he can and then the last verse and I love this verse it's like my verse Oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and I still declare your wondrous deeds. And even when I'm old and gray, oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to all who are to come. There's a lot of things out there I don't go with I don't like but God's called me to tell this generation they may think they have it together we all kind of thought that at one time then we got married and had kids we didn't know nothing <laughs> then when they became teenagers hell yeah, really <laughs> but friends he has a plan Amen. and I want us to sing I surrender all and uh, <clears throat> pastor's going to be up here. Now, you, you may come and just say, Lord, Pastor, I want you just to pray with me afresh and anew that I'm dedicating myself to serve you. Others may come and say, I have lost friends. I have neighbors who are hurting, and I don't know how to reach them. God, Speak to their hearts and their lives. If you have that kind of request, would you just raise your hand and we can pray for you and just put it down. All right, Pastor, you want to come? Let's stand our feet. Not a whole lot I can add to that. But I do want to say this. There's a lot of people out there who don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. There may be somebody in here who's never accepted Him as their Savior. I would love to believe that everybody in here is a Christian like me. That everybody in this room has prayed and asked Jesus to save them and has accepted Him as their Savior. But I don't know that for sure. I can't see your heart. I don't know where you stand with God. And I just want to say, if there's somebody here who's never accepted Jesus as your Savior, there's no better time, there's no better place. Today, you can have all your sin forgiven. You can begin a relationship with the Lord. And walk with Him and know Him as I do. But even if you're here and you are saved, maybe you've not been serving Him. Maybe you've not been following after Him. Maybe there's something He's trying to tell you. And I want you to know today you can turn around. Amen. Brother Sam's right. There's no retirement in the service for the Lord. You may have a retirement at your secular job. There's no retirement in God's service. When He's through with us, He takes us home. So if you've not been doing what He's called you to do, you can start today and get back to work. There's a lot of folks who need to hear the gospel. So as we sing this song, I want to ask you to